can't afford to give the nuclear codes of the United States to an erratic individual. By the way, you know who said that? Marco Rubio. He also called Donald Trump a dangerous con artist who has spent a career sticking it to working people. You want me to say it again? He said, Marco Rubio said, this was a dangerous con artist who spent a lifetime, spent a career sticking it to working people. Now, that begs the question, since we're in Florida, why does Marco Rubio still plan to vote for Donald Trump? Why is he supporting Donald Trump? I mean, we know, look, I know a lot of Republicans, voters, just ordinary folks, your neighbors, your friends, you know, most of them don't think the way Trump does. And there are legitimate differences between the parties, but you know, there has to be a point where you stand for something more than just party or more for than just your own career. And here's the thing. Trump didn't come out of nowhere now. For years, Republican politicians and far-right media outlets had just been pumping out all kinds of toxic, crazy stuff. I mean, first of all, there was the whole birther thing. Then they started saying climate change is a Chinese hoax. And according to them, I'm power enough to cause these hurricanes and I'm about to steal everybody's guns in the middle of the night and declare martial law, but somehow I still need a teleprompter to finish a sentence. So, so They've been saying crazy stuff, and there are a lot of politicians like Marco Rubio who know better, but they just look the other way because they figured, you know what, you know, if, if, if they really, if we can just stir folks up and think that Barack or Hillary or others are, are doing all these terrible things we're saying they're doing, that's going to help us get votes. And so we'll just oppose anything that they're trying to do. And, and maybe we'll end up having more power in Washington. And so they just stood by and said nothing, even though they knew better, while their base actually started believing some of this stuff. I say all this because Donald Trump didn't start all this. Like he usually does, he just slapped his name on it, took credit for it, and then promoted the heck out of it. Now, over the last couple of weeks, after those videos came out on that bus, there, there were a number of Republican politicians who walked away from Donald Trump. Apparently, a tape where a presidential candidate brags about actions that, if you hear what he's saying, qualify as sexual assault. Apparently, that was the deal breaker for him, or at least his poll numbers dropping after the tape came out was the deal breaker for him. I mean, last night, did you hear Trump tried to run away from comments that are on a recording? And the audience started laughing when he said, I, I really respect women. You, did you see that? But, but here's my question. My question is, why would it take this long for Republican senators and Republican congressmen and Republican governors and state reps and state senators, why would it take you this long to figure out that Donald Trump shouldn't be president? If you've made, if you've made a career of idolizing Ronald Reagan, then where were you when the party's nominee for president was kissing up to Vladimir Putin, the former KGB officer. I, I, you, know, you, you, you used to 
criticize me for even talking to the Russians. Now suddenly, you're okay with your nominee having a bromance with Putin. If you come from a family of immigrants, like almost everybody here does unless you're Native American, where were you when your party's nominee for president called immigrants criminals and rapists? If you say you love the Constitution, in fact, you say oh, Obama's overreaching with his executive actions, he's, he's, he's violating the Constitution, should be impeached. But then you, you stand up and, and nominate and support a guy who says that he would silence reporters, jail his political opponent in the middle of a debate, <laughs> deport whoever he wants. I mean, I assume you've got some familiarity with the First Amendment and the Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. Why weren't you offering him your pocket constitution like Mr. Khan did? If you're a Republican official or leader out there and you've run for office on family values, family values, why wouldn't you walk away from him months ago when you heard your nominee for president call pigs and dogs and slobs? and grade them not for their character or their intellect, but on a scale of one to ten. You don't have to be a husband or a father to stand up for women. You don't have to have a disability to say it's wrong to mock somebody with a disability. You don't have to be a Muslim to stand up for our fellow citizens who are just as patriotic as we are. You just have to be a decent person, and you just have to love this country. So, so I don't give a lot of credit for folks who are just now trying to walk away from Trump. Although I will say I'm even more confused by Republican politicians who still support Donald Trump. Marco Rubio is one of those people. How does that work? How can you call him a con artist and dangerous? and object to all the controversial things he says and then say, but I'm still going to vote for him. Come on, man. Come on, man. That, you, know what, you know what that is, though? It, it, it is the height of cynicism. That's the sign of somebody who will say anything do anything, pretend to be anybody, just to get elected. And you know what? If you're willing to be anybody just to be somebody, then you don't have the leadership that Florida needs in the United States Senate. That's not the leadership you need. That's why you got to vote for Patrick Murphy. That's why you got to vote for Hillary Clinton. That's why you got to start voting early on Monday.